I never even had a parking ticket. I've never felt anxiety like it. What I was accused of is orchestrating a sex game murder. It takes years to build a good, strong brand and reputation. It takes seconds to be blitzed and disintegrated. Being angry and upset is going to make you look guilty. I came to understand they were building a case around me that would accuse me of espionage. How easy it was to just go from law-abiding citizen to monster in the eyes of a lot of people. It ruins everything. It ruins the whole family unit, everyone around it. Welcome to the interminable circle of being wrongfully accused. Introduction Hello, my name is Raphael Rowe. I'm a journalist, television presenter, author and podcaster. You might know me from my reporting work for BBC Radio 4, my later investigations with BBC One's Panorama, or more recently as the host of Netflix's Inside the World's Toughest Prisons. But before I began my career in broadcasting, I also had my own very personal experience of accusation. In 1988, I was accused of and then convicted for a murder that I did not commit and sentenced to life in prison. I served 12 years until my conviction was finally overturned, along with two other entirely innocent men who were sentenced alongside me. The title of this audio original is You Are Accused. Simply put, it will be a deep dive into the world of accusation, one that hopes to discover the different types of accusation, how they can come about, the ways they can be made, where they can take place, how they can affect a person, who else they can touch, how long their impact can last, what the law says about accusation, what the system does or doesn't do for the accused. So why am I doing this book? My own experience of accusation was over three decades ago now, and I'm curious to see what may still be the same as back when I was first accused, and what if anything is not. Moreover, I struggle to think of any existing work or investigation, whether that's a book, television programme, or a documentary film or a podcast, that tackles the full spectrum of what accusation entails. I want to bring it all together, from all angles, to see every separate segment of what can be visualised as the wheel of accusation. Then there's my own personal position. I'm wary about calling it a privileged one, and if I could not be in this position, I would gladly change the past to not be. But over my journalistic career, I've seen that my own experience not only offers me insight, but access, as often people who have gone through such an experience will talk to me, because they know that I know what they are going through, whereas they may not wish to talk to others, who see their often traumatic event as just a tabloid story, or may carry an ulterior motive. I want to find the real, human, between the lines side of things, to move away from the time-worn format for covering stories about accusations or wrongful convictions, that of the linear, three-act story of conviction, release, new life, to instead demonstrate the grey areas, the in-betweens and the nuts and bolts. How am I going to do it? I'm going to speak with 13 different contributors, each with their own experience of and insight into accusation. These people and their stories herald from all around the world. Moreover, my focus is broader than just the convicted or traditional criminals, but is on all aspects of modern society, from blue-collar crime to white-collar crime. Although many of them are not guilty of the crimes of which they were accused, not all are. Some of these people I was first made aware of because they once wrote to me for help. Others, like Amanda Knox, who you will hear from midway through this audiobook, are household names in terms of the coverage their cases received. 
Some stories took place years ago, others are still happening and playing out right now, at the time of my recording this audiobook. So what do I want you, the listener, to get from it? In no real order, I hope this audiobook marries our modern society's fascination with true crime and our deep-seated human fear of it happening to us. I hope you also find them, in themselves, interesting, fascinating true stories. I hope you come away from it understanding that it can happen to anyone, plus the variety of impacts that it can have, and the knock-on effects beyond just the person accused. I hope to challenge your preconceptions and received wisdom. Many of us may think we know what it would be like from what we have seen on TV, or how we understand the world to work, something I myself learned first-hand to question. Accusations are scary things. My intention is not to scare you, but some of it is unavoidable, uncomfortable. Sitting in your living room on a Sunday, lying in your bath before bed, or out on a morning walk. Just think you don't have that weighing on you, and if you did, just how much it would be in that moment. Or, if you do presently, or you have been accused, or were close to someone accused in your past, I hope a lot of what you hear during this investigation will ring true. Whether straight away or come the end, I also hope to force you to confront the ultimate question. How would you cope if you were accused of a crime? And I think the best place to begin my exploration of accusation today is with one such story that feels very close to home. <laughs> 